Listen, I'm not going to make any remarks other than to tell you how happy we are that you're all here and have this chance to visit. And I know that before we leave, because I haven't been able to say individually hello to you, all we'll do that in the other room. And I know that you've been getting some briefings and still have some more to go. So practically everything I would say might be just replowing some ground that's already been plowed. And it just seems to me that maybe a better idea would be to have some dialogue instead of a monologue. And there must have been times, no matter how kind and generous you are with regard to uh, what we're doing here, there must have been times when you have said, if I could ask him, I'd like to, <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm very proud to be part of Ronald Reagan's administration. I don't have a shoe, I don't have a microphone, but I'm starting in the right direction. Sir, perhaps it comes from my own optic, but I do want to ask you a question. As a banker, as someone who's involved with finances, I never thought, and I'm sure that you never thought, that you would live to see the day that Ronald Reagan presented his own proposal for fiscal balance, deficits, of the size that you presented. People ask me those questions. I, I'm sure there are answers to them. But could you tell me, sir, how can we explain to the American people the seeming incapacity of even the finest president of my lifetime to deal with a pattern of increasing federal deficits? Yes, there are two simple answers to these deficits. In March of uh, 81, when we first submitted our economic program, According to all the economic counsel and advice and all the projections that we could get, we honestly believed that we could approach a balanced budget by 1984. No one, it seems, no one in the country, including here in Washington, had predicted the falling off the edge of the cliff that took place in July of 81. We knew we'd been in a recession since 1979. Our opponents like to forget that. that um, that there was 21.5% interest rates and 12.4% inflation. It had even reached 14% in those two years when it was back to back. That there were already uh, more than 7.5% 7 7 unemployment. And in some of the heavy industry areas like steel, well, I campaigned in 1980 in places like Flint, Michigan, where unemployment was 20% then. The, what explanation could be given for that fall off, it certainly couldn't be attributed to anything in our economic plan because our economic plan didn't get signed into law till August. <laughs> but I think from the peak of money supply that had built up at the highest rate uh, in history during 1980, and then when the string was pulled on it and pulled and held so long and so hard down, I think this is what tipped the balance and because of the housing industry and everyone else with regard to high interest rates, uh, that, it, that, they, that it fell, we fell into that deeper recession. Now, about 50% of the deficit is due to that. It's due to the lost revenue from people who are not earning and paying taxes and to the increase in the number of people who must be helped by way of unemployment insurance and benefits and so forth because certainly we're not going to let them starve. The other half is structural. And this is the thing that we've been struggling with for all these almost two and a half years now uh, with, the, uh, with the Congress, and I must say, and, and bipartisan, congressmen on both sides of this, that programs that have a built-in increase in them, the, uh, the uh, COLAs, cost of living increases and adjustments and so forth, in some of the programs they were, were way above, really, the, the cost of living increase. Now. Both of these things, to try and get at those, uh, you can remember the, uh, the great scandal when we tried to do something when Social Security was faced with uh, absolute bankruptcy, and yet until the 82 election was over, they made it a political football and charged that we were trying to throw the old people out into the snow. And uh, being an old people myself, I resented that. <laughs> Um, 
but those have get, given us this, this deficit thing. Now, our economic program, obviously, is working. And it's, uh, we know now the difference and the signs of recovery that are there. But at the same time, I have to say, if we'd gotten all we asked for in budget reductions, the deficit today would be $41 billion less. In other words, we've had to settle for anywhere from 60 or 70 or 80 percent at any time of what we asked for in reductions. Now, some uh, would challenge that the part of the tax pro or the part of the program that was cutting taxes contributed. Uh, I don't think so. I think that it's the the tax reductions that have been the stimulus that has led to the recovery we're now seeing. The other factor was one that is kind of unjust. And that is that we succeeded so much faster in reducing inflation than we thought we would that our revenues were made smaller <laughs> because of that. And uh, yet I wouldn't have it any other way. From the 12.4 that we started with, <laughs> and then I'll just finish with this, the last six months inflation has been running at less than one half of one percent. And uh, we never dreamed of anything of that kind. So now we're in the battle again to try and get continuation of the economic program. And uh, I have made it plain, as I did last night in the press conference, that those on the Hill who want to go back to increased spending and who want to cancel uh, some of the tax cuts still to come, the July 1st uh, last installment, the indexing and so forth, uh, I have taken a stand. I will veto any attempt to increase taxes, and I will veto. <laughs> and I'll veto any uh, attempts at breaking the, busting the budget there with, when the appropriations uh, come down. But um, it's a frustrating thing because we've had to postpone. If we can get what we have asked for, as a budget for this year, in which no one seems to want to do. It is still a bigger budget. It is last year's budget, or this year's budget, the 83-year budget. If we get that for 84, what we asked for was the 83 budget plus 4 percent increase to cover any inflationary cost. So all of the cuts we've made have been in the area of reducing the projected increase. We have never cut anything back below what they were getting before, and yet all over the country, we're being held up in view as heartless and unfair and that we have taken these programs away from the people that need them. Uh, we've done nothing of the kind. We've simply reduced the rate of increase. But if we could get what we've asked for, we will be on a declining path of deficits in which you can look down the line and see a day when the balance comes. But now... Oh, Robert. Um, Mac Maybe we'll take two. Mac Mac Lane, just for a like to condense, condense all the well wishers that, that I've heard from daily for the last three years, two and a half years. Just do it in seven words, and it boils down to this. Hanged up, Mr. President. We love Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, who, which one of you? There were three there, but one of you I knew still. Which one was it? Oh, you do? Oh, he has a question. The question is, sir, would you please come forward right away, sooner the better, and go ahead and declare for re-election next time? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, there are just two reasons why it's too early. One, you automatically become a dead duck. And if it's the other way, then everything you try to do is viewed as political and part of the 84 campaign and therefore since we have to have a consensus to get things done because one house is dominated by the other party uh, you'd be out the window with that so um, uh, we just have to keep them guessing for a while but i think you were the first one over there at the President, i bring you greetings from louisiana and a very short and easy question now that the Democrats are renaming Reaganomics because it's working. <laughs> now that we've gained the high ground economically, would it be presumptuous, sir, 
to look for a legislative program, a legislative back program, uh, address towards the social issues, which to this point have not been resolved. This, I can tell you, is what was in the 84 budget that we presented uh, a couple of months ago in March, and what they are resisting on the Hill, and already has come out of committee in, in, in the House, and, and the Senate is talking about it, of just paying no attention to that budget. But that was, yes, we did address, since we got the compromise on Social Security and have put that back on a sound basis, we had a program that is addressing the, what I call the structural uh, part of it, the entitlement programs. And, um, you know, these are the ones that the term when we came here that the Congress used was that these programs were uncontrollable. Well, what they meant by uncontrollable was that uh, they just weren't going to do anything to try and control them. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is what we're digging in our heels about, and yet, uh, you know, the the Congress says, uh, I can't pass legislation. <laughs> they can. So uh, that's where the battle lines are joined. I know I'm supposed to go, but there's, I'll take one more here. This is uh, more fun than I've had all day. <laughs> As a Californian in Sacramento, Elk Grove, I uh, know that we have a good educational program in the state of California. Don't you think you can uh, educate the speaker and the, some of the leaders of the unions and some of these other people that run around and forget how to spell Reaganomics or speak it? Do you think you can do something about it for us? <laughs> well, uh, right now, I'll tell you, I'm, we're interested in an educational program, but it's, uh, it's wider ranging than that. You know, we've just had a commission do a thorough study of education in the United States because of the declining scores in the college entrance exam that are given and uh, evidently a decline in education. And it's uh, again kind of draws a line between the two parties because they came in with a fantastic report. And I spoke of it last night on the press conference there of the lack of discipline and educational discipline also in our schools. Students that are allowed uh, uh, to choose the subjects they'll study and um, uh, very few mandatory subjects that they have to study. And um, a lessening, as I said last night, you know, when somebody can get credit for a high school diploma for studying bachelor life, uh, <laughs> I have a lot more fun waiting till he gets out of school. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the things of that kind that are just astounding to those of us who went to school at an earlier time when you, the required courses, the compulsory courses were such as to take advantage of the fact that no 14-year-old child starting school knows what he should be studying or he or she should be studying, and someone has to guide them. But um, immediately, one of the candidates for president on the Democratic side, upon the release of that report, said, ah, I have a program for $11 billion of support to education. Well, that's what's been wrong. And I last night gave the figures. The federal government, in 10 years, went from $790,000 of education, $760,000 of educational aid, federal aid, to $14.9 billion. And that's still only less than 10% of the cost of education, but the federal government's been using that to get about 50% of the control uh, of education. And we think it's time to give education back to the local school districts where it worked so well for so many years and get the federal government out of it and uh, <laughs> you see what you got into? You really asked a question about educating Tip O'Neill, and I turned it around and got in a lick for what we what we want to do. Um, if I start teaching Tip, I don't want to waste it on teaching him to spell. <laughs> but, uh, well. I know that I have to go, and this time it's a, I'm keeping a National Security Council meeting waiting. So maybe with the Middle East and Central America and all, maybe I better get over there and see what's going on in the world. But uh, again, God bless all of you, and, and I go in the other room there, don't I? All right, that way or this way? All right, okay. I'll see you all in the other room. <laughs>